Sergeant Mango, I want you to remember that name. Sergeant Mango shot Kano Mukebezi on Sunday morning. I want to speak about the conflict between the two arms of government, that's the military, the UPDF, and the police. Those are two arms, uh, uh, the, the law enforcement arms, one to defend, one is to keep the law. I want to talk about the unfortunate incidents that took place on Sunday morning, which reminds us of some other incidences that have happened in the past where there's been conflict between the arms of uh, law enforcement, between the military, between the army and uh, the other parts of the, uh, the state, that is the police and the media. And I want to speak about how we can put on a frame to understand this, to avoid unnecessary further conflict. Uh, really, in my heart, is about peacemaking. The importance of peacemaking is very important because an incident that could be an individual um, decision of inability to, to handle conflict can be projected on a bigger group that could escalate a conflict. We could have a conflict between uh, the army and the police. We could have a conflict based on tribes. Uh, uh, that uh, wh wh What was the tribe of this, uh, the one who shot uh, Mango, Sergeant Mango? Well, his, his tribe was so-and-so. Then who was shot? His tribe was so-and-so. I want to avoid that. And I want to address this issue and analyze it um, in a simple uh, it's simple to understand. Oh, let's just summarize the facts. The facts is that there was a, a, a group of people returning back. They apparently were going maybe they were going back to the military barracks on Sunday morning. Uh, they could have been coming from a party or a place of uh, entertainment. Young people, or pe people like to do that. They want to have party. And then there was uh, an accident where the vehicle rammed into a signpost of uh, a gas station. Uh, that was sometime about five in the morning. So he knocked down a gas station signpost. <laughs> I don't know why he knocked down the signpost. Uh, some, some people may be annoyed that maybe he, he, he didn't like the high prices of fuel. But we know military doesn't get fuel from the uh, low petrol. They don't have to pay for that. So I think it was likely maybe an incidence of drinking and driving. It could be. And then uh, in terms of resolving it, when the police came in to tow the vehicle to the police for further investigation, the military boys jumped out of the vehicle. They told the police. No, in fact, they didn't even tell the police from the from the incidents, they began to shoot at the tow truck in which was sitting a Corporal Mukebezi. Mukebezi, by the way, is a, a, a Bantu word for someone who checks, someone who inspects, someone who is checking things out. So the pol police constable was shot at by the UPDF Sergeant Mango. Now, I like to laugh because mango is something fruity, something friendly, something, something that you eat. Well, mango wasn't, wasn't fruity at all. Uh, the conflict uh, escalated very quickly. He wanted the, the, the vehicle to be towed to the military barracks in Buya. And the policeman was saying, no, uh, according to the police law, we need to take this vehicle for documentation, investigation to Kira Road Police Station. Well, the, what followed was very unfortunate. What followed was gunshots. Pa, 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 pa. Uh, Sergeant Mango shot at the tow truck in which uh, Corporal Muskebes was, and he shot him. And unfortunately, as we're talking today, Kano Muskebes was thrown on the ground. Uh, he bled a whole lot, and uh, his, his leg has had to be amputated. Now, everybody was involved in, you know, uh, all members of parliament, the clergy, uh, the police, uh, 
And the army has commented on it. It's very unfortunate. It's tragic. How in heaven's name do you shoot a policeman who's doing his job? And uh, this has the potential of creating unnecessary rivalry, unnecessary conflict within the country where the two arms of law enforcement are seen as harboring uh, unresolved conflict. So I want to, I want for us to give a little background and I want to bring to us that the problem we have today is not so much an institutional problem, it is an individual problem. The individual problem is the inability to resolve conflicts without resorting to the use of guns and violence. Uh, a, a little background will, will help us. Uh, about five, it's about what? Th four years ago, Matthew Kanyumunyu. Remember that name? Matthew Kanyumunyu. And Akena, a child development activist. What happened, there was a, a small incident in a parking lot in, uh, I believe it was Garden City where Akena apparently scrapped the vehicle of Matthew's, you know, SUV. And instead of resolving it, Matthew was apologizing. Uh, I mean, Akena was apologizing for the scrape on the vehicle. This, this fender benders sometimes happen. They happen when, when you are driving in and out. Matthew pulled out a gun and shot. He shot Akena and he killed him. And today he's serving, uh, I believe, five years for, quote, quote, involuntary manslaughter. Um, when that came out, we, th that story had a dimension because Matthew Kanyumunyu, uh, he's more from Western Uganda, uh, Rwanda, Burundi side of the region. And uh, Akena was from Northern Uganda. The conflict, uh, the incidents of the few individuals had the capacity of bringing uh, an intra-tribal, intra-group rivalry. And uh, I, I would like to say that prior to that, there wasn't really a major fight between uh, the people of northern Uganda, Luo, Acholi, with the people from western or uh, Ugandans of Randi's origin. I think there is a, a danger when we extrapolate individual violent uh, impatience, uh, inability to resolve conflict, and we extrapolate it on a bigger group, on a, 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 in that case, tribal level, or an educational group, or Bagagabavu type level. I think we need to address it individually and say that there is a problem where individuals are unable to resolve conflict peacefully. And there is need to build the capacity to resolve those conflicts that will come. A natural part of life. Um, so, so we need to, we need to stop the extrapolation we need to put responsibility where it should be and then we need to work at averting this in the future and i personally i think we need to one of the things we need to do we need to train people whether they are soldiers whether in cmi whether they are in police whether they are you know businessmen like matthew can from privileged family in how to resolve conflicts peacefully without pulling out a gun uh, we also had uh, a UPDF incident where Brigadier General Matayo Charlie Gonza, uh, back 2000, uh, 2019, 2019 uh, had an incident, incident with, uh, I think it was Sergeant Namaganda. Namaganda stopped the Brigadier General who was driving in the wrong lane. And uh, unfortunately, again, it escalated where the, the, the conflict was not resolved well. 
the conflict was not resolved well. And because it wasn't resolved well, it ended up causing problems. It ended up causing problems. What Namaganda was slapped. There was an incidence of embarrassment. And it, it looked bad. It looked bad between the military, the UPDF, and the, and the police. You know, traffic violation. It, it wasn't good for the images. Uh, that is, you have a senior military officer, uh, you know, slapping, um, you know, a junior officer who's trying to do her job. It just, that's not good. Now, l again, I want to bring it back to the individual. I want to bring, uh, yes, we can talk about other things. I want to bring back to the individual. The, not all soldiers respond with slaps. No. And, and not all people from Matthias Charigonza's tribe respond the same way. There is those who need to learn and to be trained on how to resolve conflict, keeping the dignity and the life of everybody. And, and, and this is something that is important in training men and as, as, a, as a, a, a pastor, as a clergy at the university where I've been for more than 20 years training young men, one of the things that I teach is when you deal with frustration, how do you resolve it? How do you handle it? I mean, the same frustration could be in your home. That is your wife. You, you may want to have sex with your wife and she says, no, not today. And you are, you know, you're excited. You're ready about it, but you're not. So how are you going to, how are you going to deal with that? Are, are you going to beat her up? Are you going to rape her? And is no, you need to learn how to resolve that conflict. It, it, it could, maybe it's not about sex. Maybe it's about something else. So one of the things that we need to address as a country is how do we de-escalate conflict uh, in public life? How do we de-escalate conflict in individual life? How do we teach people how to handle conflict without resorting to the use of force and violence? I mean, right now, Mango is on the run. Uh, Sergeant Mango is on the run. Uh, right now, he's, uh, uh, his commanding office is arrested. The force is looking embarrassed. Uh, we've had apologies from the, uh, the spokesperson of UPDF, which is good. We've had apologies from uh, uh, Otafile. Uh, uh, yeah, it's an embarrassing situation. And, and indeed, apologies must be done. I, I recall the CDF... Uh, that is uh, the, the, the command, the chief of defense forces recently, uh, Muhozi. That is he, when there was an incident between the media and the, the UPDF forces, and there was a, a fight. There was a, 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 a journalist from NTV, Galaxy, were, were beaten. And, uh, you know, in front of cameras. I mean, so the evidence was there, the actions were there, the violence was there. Uh, it can't be denied. It was really honorable that he came, General David Moore came and apologized. And he says, we do not condone this. This is wrong. That, that was really great. And I think an apology on behalf of the institution to the two groups, that is to the police officers who are doing and undertaking the law and number two to the public to the public because we are all partners in development there is a necessity for apology and i think that would be very good to promote the intra uh force um partnership the joint the joint task for police uh and the military it's important so uh, i i think another step apart from recognizing that this, excuse me, that this was actually an individual action. It is not a, a policy of the force. It is an inability to resolve conflict. Uh, perhaps the details can be understood better what happened. And then an apology being served will be very important. It's, it, it's very, very critical that the police... Uh, the military, the UPDF, the CMI have good working relationships. And part of the reason why I'm making this is because uh, when an issue is not analyzed and uh, it is not properly handled, it can it can be it, it, it can it, it can be used for 
unnecessary division, and I don't want that. I think we need to get to the issue of how we train young men and young women in resolving conflict. And that's something I'm passionate about. We've talked about the boy child. We've talked about training the girl child, uh, receiving a lot of effort, but the boy child not receiving. Well, you know what? The boy child is the one who joins the army. The boy child is the one who joined the UPDF. The boy child is the one who joins the CMI and, and chieftaincy. And if the boy child is not trained to restrain himself, tell him, you know, it's okay to party. It's okay to, to have a good time. But sometimes when you have a, a problem, you resolve the issue in an orderly way. This is how you restrain yourself. This is how you keep your hand away from the trigger. This is how you, you get other people to help you. This is how you speak. If you want the vehicle to go to, if you don't want the vehicle to be towed to, um, to the police station, don't shoot. Come and talk. If you can't be able to get another senior leader to talk for your behalf, call your senior and work it out well. So, uh, the, the Bible says, Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the sons of God. I think we need to put this verily in a place that for the development of our country, we need to deal with conflict without resorting to the use of slaps, the use of your power, whether you're brigadier general, to the use of a gun, whether you're Matthew Kanyamunyu with a gun, uh, the use of uh, rapid fire, whether you are um, Sergeant Mango, uh, a, uh, whatever group or you are, uh, it, it doesn't matter. There is need to resolve conflict without the use of excessive force. We need calm heads. We need calm hearts, both in the home and in, 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 our, in our public space. And so today... As the country is dealing with this issue, I want, I want to challenge those who are watching this with, you know, with, with difficulty. Justice must be preserved. Justice must be uh, kept. Uh, we must recognize that uh, uh, Corporal, Corporal Mukebezi was doing his job. And uh, he's, he's doing the right thing. He should not be made to suffer for doing the right thing. And I think it's been good. We should make a hero out of him. Otherwise, less people will want to join the police. The police, the, the, the sense of value, the sense of dignity. You know, you don't feel good when you can be shot any time. You know, it is necessary that the upkeepers of the law, and remember law is from God. Policemen are servants of God. Policemen who are keeping law and justice are doing it because the entire universe stands on truth and justice. It doesn't matter how the individual may be corrupted or no, but we honor and respect them the same way you respect father and mother. It doesn't matter. They are upholding that office that has been handed down to them by God. So we must honor them. So if you don't honor the police, if you don't honor the person keeping law, you are dishonoring God. We must respect them and we must honor them. My effort is that they sh we, should, we, should have, uh, we should have an apology. He should be compensated. And then also training needs to be done. We need training uh, within the special forces, within the military, within the CMI on how to uh, resolve conflict, that is personal conflicts, in a non-violent, non-excessive way without resorting to the use of force. Those are my thoughts for it. I hopefully that you can be able to uh, respond to me, what you think. Uh, we must be able to think through those issues that are happening now and ask the right questions and see how we can be able to stop them from happening again. If you have ideas on how to de-escalate conflict, if you have ideas of uh, wanting a training in your group, university, uh, department of government i'll be happy to do that thank you so much give me a follow follow that and give me a feedback i'll be able to, re to hear from you bye-bye